<laughs> no. This is a very serious video series. <laughs> this is very, very serious. I stepped on a shallot. <laughs> Fatality. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jake Boyd, and we're back for another episode of Cooking Time. Today, I'm going to be making a chicken and pea skillet pie from Julia Tertian's Small Victories. Um, I love this cookbook. It has a lot of very easy, short recipes. This is a take on sort of a classic chicken pot pie, but it's going to be a lot easier than what we already have. So to get us started, I have three chicken breasts. These are bone-in, skin-on chicken breasts. They've been in the oven for 40 minutes at 375. So they're good and roasted. We're just going to let them sit there and cool off for a second because we are going to tear them up. Now that we've done that, we're going to move on to making the pie dough. Okay, so the key for pie dough is to keep everything very, very cold. So I've got all of my stuff in the fridge right now. I'm going to go ahead. These are just some ice cubes right here. I'm just going to mix um, ice cubes, a little bit of water, and then um, a couple of teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. I don't know why this recipe has apple cider vinegar. I actually did some research today while I was looking things up. Some people say it inhibits the growth of gluten with the acidity, but um, some people said that that's just bull and it's what their grandmas did, so it's what they do forever. So that's what we're gonna go with today. And then we're gonna get about 60 milliliters of water. Quarter cup. Then a couple teaspoons of this. Perfect. And now we're gonna grab our butter, which has been chilling in the fridge. And we're gonna be using our hands a lot today, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump it into this flour mixture right here, um, which is about 150 grams of flour and a half tablespoon of salt. Now this butter is very cold. All that we're gonna do, really, you're gonna get your fingers and work it into the flour. It's gonna be a bunch of different sizes within the flour. You don't actually want to evenly combine it. You want big giant chunks of butter because big giant chunks of cold butter, as soon as they hit the oven, they're going to expand uh, and create steam. And what that will do is create a flaky crust. So we want to keep these ingredients as cold as possible until they hit the oven, okay? All right, just get that last little bit. We have to make sure we get all the butter in there. Perfect. Okay. All right, now I'm just going to take my hands, work it on in there. It's kind of hard to describe the consistency that you're going for. The thing that I always compare it to is if you ever saw commercials for that, like, sculpty sand, it's like uh, sand, but it'll, like, retain its shape. And that's kind of what I always go for whenever I'm trying to incorporate butter into flour is it'll kind of, if you squish it together, it'll kind of keep the same shape for one second. And I love working with my hands. The reason this cookbook is called Small Victories, there are little like cooking hacks in it and she calls them Small Victories. It's sort of written as a beginner's cookbook, but uh, the thing that I really like about Julia Tertian is that she's not a, this isn't a restaurant cookbook, right? This is made from a home cook. Um, she was a private chef and uh, she's never actually had a restaurant. So she's very accustomed to writing recipes. Uh, one of the things that in every single cookbook she always prides herself on is like, she tells you, if you can only use one dish for this, I'm gonna tell you that you only need to use one dish for this. Um, so that way you don't dirty an extra dish because as every home cook knows, the very worst part of cooking is cleaning up. Okay, let me see here. Hmm. I'm almost satisfied with this. Let me see here. Yeah, I think that's gonna be good. Okay. 
See? Okay, now see, we've got it to where there are gonna be some big lumps, some little lumps of butter, and then if you kind of squeeze the dough like this, it looks like it's already holding together, see? Okay, although it'll immediately fall apart if you try to crumble it, but anyway. Okay, that's looking about right. Okay, now we're gonna combine this water and vinegar mixture. The key with pie dough, you wanna put as little water as possible into the mixture. Water, although it seems, we're going for steam, right? But if you weigh it down with too much water, then it won't actually steam up in the oven. It'll just uh, kind of get soggy and it won't crumb as well. So we wanna do as little as possible. Again, I'm just gonna work with my hands to get this all combined. Um, and we're working with, obviously, see there are ice cubes in here. Don't let the ice cubes fall into the uh, pie dough. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm gonna just go. Pour in a very little bit. It's all sticking together now. We definitely, we want to leave it on the drier side for sure. Okay. Now um, I'm going to go ahead. One, you know, little life hack that you can do here. Um, just roll it out onto a piece of parchment paper. If you roll it out on a parchment paper when it's time to transfer it to the actual skillet, it's going to be just so much easier. Okay. Here we go. I'm just going to clear this area up a little bit. As it's time to start rolling, I'm gonna get my parchment paper here. Make sure my hands are very dry. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and flour the surface here. <laughs> Move my egg back. Perfect. And we're gonna get this all out here. I'm gonna get what I can out of the bowl. We're gonna get it out here, form it into a disc. Okay, perfect. And now we're gonna roll it out um, very thin to about 14 inches in width. Enough to, see, I'm gonna use my uh, 12 inch cast iron over here. So we want to leave a little bit of extra room. I have made many, many things out of this cookbook. It is wonderful. One of my favorites is everything biscuits, which you're like, what? What is everything biscuits? So, you know, an everything bagel, it's the same concept, just taken to good old Southern biscuits. So similarly, you know, buttermilk, and then this kind of blew my mind when I read it just because I truly hadn't thought about it. But everything, everything is onion flakes, sesame seeds, poppy seeds. That's everything, in case you were wondering. So you can skip the trip to Trader Joe's for that everything but the bagel mix and just do it at home. Okay, we are rolled out to a good distance, or to a good width, excuse me. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the fridge. Like I said, we want everything cold before it hits the oven, okay? So I'm going to clear a little space in here. Now it's time to make the filling. Um, so for a traditional chicken pot pie, obviously you would have, okay, maybe not obviously, you would have a, a bechamel and a, you know, tarragon is that thing that's always gonna make it taste like chicken pot pie. We're gonna do things a little bit differently here. Instead of a bechamel, what I've got here is creme fraiche. Creme fraiche, for those who don't know, it's sort of like sour cream, except it has much, much more fat. It's common in French cooking, you can actually get pizzas topped with creme fraiche instead of like marinara sauce, which is very delicious, but obviously um, pretty horrible for you. Now, I know what you're thinking. I cannot find that anywhere in grocery stores. Easy solution. Um, instead of getting creme fraiche, you get a cup of heavy whipping cream, add a couple of tablespoons of buttermilk and let it sit overnight. Um, and then you've got basically what is creme fraiche. So that's what I'm gonna be using here. Um, and then there's gonna be a little bit of mustard, some shallots, which I'm about to cut up, and then some parsley and some frozen peas. And then we'll, we'll shred this up and get it all together.
the thing that I really like about this particular recipe is that like when you've got it in the cast iron skillet and it's done and you have that golden crust, it looks just, it looks stellar. It looks straight out of grandma's kitchen. And plus with the high fat content, nobody's gonna complain. What they don't know can't hurt them. You're the one that made it and you're the only one that knows that there's a full cup of heavy cream in there. And a stick of butter. I'm gonna go ahead and shred the chicken now. Yeah, this is cool enough. Okay. Um, obviously, just stepped on a shallot. So obviously these are bone-in skin on. We're gonna remove the skins and the bones. Much as I'm sure some, some lovely skin fat would, would please someone, I think this recipe already has enough fat in it. She actually just came out with another new cookbook called Simply Julia. It is also, it is similarly incredible. It's actually more geared towards um, health foods. There's no cup of heavy cream or creme fraiche in that book as far as I can tell so far. Um, and then another one that I got was one that she co-authored. It's called In BB's Kitchen. It's about recipes from grandmas living on Africa's east coast. Um, and it's just a fast, it's a, such a wonderful book because they have interviews with the grandmas in there because as we all know, grandmas are the heart of cooking. Okay. Chicken is shredded. Now I'm going to put this off to the side can toss my skins and my bones, or you can keep them for your next stock. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab my peas. Ooh, just the whole bag. Beautiful. I love frozen peas. I love peas. Okay, we're gonna do about a quarter cup of Dijon mustard. Gonna put the shallots in here too. And then we're gonna top it all off with creme fraiche. Been fermenting. <laughs> Nice and thick. Okay. Let's see how that works. If it's looking a little dry, we can always add a little extra. All right. And then what else? Fangies. Fangy time. All right. Okay, we're gonna give the fingies a quick rinse. Fingies, that's their scientific name. We're grabbing our dough out of the fridge. Ooh, it's actually firmed up a little bit, but that's okay. Okay. Just gonna flip her right there. Gonna go ahead and get it into the edge. You can crimp the edges if you really want to be super fancy and see, I've got some extras over here. So I'm gonna make up from my lopsidedness by getting it over here. Okay, beautiful. Now we're gonna cut just a couple of breathing holes. Okay, and then now, I'm gonna take my egg. This is optional. Um, it doesn't do anything for the flavor. 
but if you want it to get that beautiful golden brown on the top, then we are going to need to do an egg wash for our pie dough. And we're gonna just mince this parsley real quick. Only like, just like a handful. This isn't, other than the pie dough, this doesn't really need to be all that precise, but that looks good. It'll add a little bit of green in there. Cut. Oh no, Jacob. Jacob, what are you doing? Why did you do this? Okay, there's gonna be one very parsley y part of this dough. Shush, stop laughing, stop! I don't make mistakes, I'm the expert here. Hush, hush. Okay, and now we're gonna do that egg wash on the top, which is perfectly clean because I didn't forget the parsley, and try to add it in the last second because only a rookie would do that, and I am not a rookie. <laughs> All right. Now, into the oven it will go. You can leave it at 375 where it just was. It's gonna be about an hour or 50 minutes. Um, just notice when your pie is uh, golden brown and when the filling is bubbling out of the top. Okay, it looks like it's about done, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out of the oven. Oh, beautiful, we've got a golden brown crust. And I'm just gonna let it rest for about 10 minutes, but it is looking delicious. Thank you all so much for watching again. This has been another segment of Cooking Time. And just remember that you can pick up Julia Tertian's Small Victories at Sterling Municipal Library with your library card. Thanks for watching, bye.